Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. Round four of the candidates. And I'm going to show you the game between Yan Nipomnishi and Ali Reza Firuzja. This game is an absolute cracker, so stick around. Going into this round, Nepo was leading the tournament, joint in joint first place. Firuz Jart had three draws, but his strategy so far has been to play really sharp openings to test his opponents. Um, and he continues with that strategy by playing a Nidor variation, we have an open Sicilian. And Nepo plays f3, and we transpose quickly into an English attack. So you can also get this via 6 bishop b3 as well. So this is, you know, one of the most testing continuations. There are so many testing continuations against the Nidorf, but in this one, basically, white usually aims for a kingside pawn storm and castle's queenside. Now, we saw in the previous round, well, Caruana against Duda, we saw Duda playing h5 here. Well, that's a very practical move to stop g4 and, and then black continues with queenside play with b5. But Fido's jar plays bishop e7. And you could say, well, this is one of the main lines. And white has to castle here. If you play g4 too early, then black is able to break with d5. And this is actually strong. And that's why white has to play castle's queenside first. And here, well, my favourite move with black is to play pawn to a5 to try and generate some play as quickly as possible. But Fido's jar goes for the main line with knight d7. And this has been seen in hundreds of games. And white pushes on with g5. Now, instead of moving the knight, b4 is the main move, so black doesn't back down. And one way of playing this for white is to exchange pieces. So you take on f6, White plays on takes on c3, black takes on c3 rather, and then knight a5. And this has been seen in a lot of games. Um, and basically, black has uh, managed to, to equalize in these positions, but yeah, tough positions. But instead, Nepo goes for a move which just keeps more tension in the position, knight e2. That's very interesting. Doesn't go for a slight advantage. And, you know, he was playing his moves very quickly. Firuz Jar was also playing very quickly. Knight e8. And now f4. So this pawn just wants to force its way through. And then to disturb black's king side. So a5. This is all absolutely standard theory. And now f5. It's been seen in hundreds of games. And here... Well, a4 is the main line, and then, well, you can take on e6, but then you, you this this move is is absolutely crazy, and then black plays b3. It's it's absolutely mad. Um, no doubt, uh, Nepo was ready with with something there. Um, it's generally thought to be okay for black, but well, it, it is very very complicated, and if you have some. You know, new idea there, you know, well, either side can, can lose very quickly, actually. Nepo was obviously ready with that. But here, Firuz Jar played bishop c4. And if you look at databases, this has been played in a handful of games. If you look at sort of online databases where there are more games, uh, you know, that includes a lot of correspondence games, well, basically computer games, then you'll see this has been tested in more games. So it suggests that, yeah, this has been researched by, by some players. And Firuzja played this very quickly. 
if you feed this into a computer, then it likes this move, knight g3, and thinks that white is better here. I mean, white is, is trying to ram through with f6 and just get a quick attack. But I wonder how this knight feels about that computer assessment of better for white. You know, it could be that black simply gives up a piece here for two pawns and just plays with that knight on a1. So here, Nepo had a bit of a think. I mean, he was obviously caught by surprise. Bishop c4 is an unusual move. But after nine minutes, not too long, he played king b1, and that is a very practical move because it well, obviously it tucks the king further into the corner, and after a4, that knight can drop back to c1, a much better square than a1, and, well, it protects that important pawn on a2, but can also spin into the game if required. In the meantime, you know, white can go back to playing moves like knight g3 and f6 to really disturb black's king position. So I think if black plays slowly here, then that could just be fatal. I think after knight g3 and f6, it's just too slow. So, well, Ali Reza played d5 here. A classic Nidorf counter-attack, counter-sacrifice. So if pawn takes d5, knight d6, beautiful blockading square, and actually, suddenly black's position makes a lot of sense. But Nepo wanted to fight fire with fire. He played f6, so the position is now just exploding. Takes on f6. It's, it's actually possible to play knight g3 here. That's very interesting. But Nepo actually very quickly took on f6. He wasn't thinking too long over his moves. You know, he wasn't phased by playing this variation, which is obviously came as a surprise. You know, he's a very natural attacking player and well anyway you know when he's on good form he plays very quickly knight d takes f6 and now knight g3 so nepo continuing to play very quickly and here firuz ja went in for a big think he thought for 30 minutes here um you know we've seen for example in the game against nakamura Firuz Jar had a huge lead on the clock. But it wasn't so in, in this game, even though, you know, Nepo was the one that was surprised. And here, well, he made a mistake. The computer says King H8 is the best move. Well, perhaps he was a little bit concerned about this end game. White is a pawn down, but white certainly has a lot of play here. Again, the computer thinks that black is all right here, but listen, that you know, this looks like a quite a scary position for black actually. Well, it all looks scary to be honest. Bishop takes f1 played, and well, just in practical terms, this looks like a lot of fun for white. You know, whose king is safer here? Well, you know, that is often a gauge of simply in practical terms how we feel about a position and here well white king position looks so much better than blacks with that g7 pawn gone and this knight looking to get in on f5 wow this doesn't look like much fun for black at all a3 again after another very long think and b3 of course you close the position and, well, if, if black can land a queen on b2, great. But how do you get it there? Not so simple. If knight takes, then you can take here. Um, pawn takes allows queen g2 check and, and this. Um, I mean, this is fantastic. So king h8, I mean, yeah, it seems sensible to tuck the king away. Pawn takes pawn d5, so what's the material now? It's actually even material, but black still has this problem of a knight 
about to land on f5. Um, and it's just a very difficult position. I, understandably, I think, Firuzcha played the knight to d6 to cover the f5 square. But, well, it was interesting looking at the players during the game. You know, Nepo kind of pulls faces a little bit. He was kind of going... He basically wasn't impressed by knight takes uh, knight d6, and fairly quickly he snapped off that pawn on b4. And in fact, well, why not? Um, you might think, well, what's that got to do with you know the kingside attack, or you know why snap that pawn off? Well, it basically does make that king a bit more secure. And um, you know, in end games, well, there could be three connected passed pawns steaming down the board. This is not an easy position at all. Um, if knight back, then actually white could just plow on with, with c4 and, and go for c5. White king is actually pretty safe. Rook c8 played. And now this is excellent from Nepo. He plays bishop b6. Now, again, this, it looks kind of left field. You know, why is white playing like this. Well, the queen has problems. If it comes to e8, then rook takes knight wins material. Bishop takes, then queen takes knight. So basically, black's queen move, queen d7 is forced. And this is really nice. Queen e1, the queen switches back. So it gets out of any trouble on this diagonal. And it is very difficult for black to defend that pawn successfully. So, for example, if, if the pawn moves forward, the bishop cuts back, and I think we can all see that is curtains for the king. So, queen e1, what does black do about this? I mean, it's such an uncomfortable position. Rook b8 hits the bishop. Bishop comes to a5. Well, it's just going to cut back to the long diagonal. And, it, and what's at the end of the rainbow here. What's at the end of that red line? Well, it's the king. And basically, black is just lost here. It's it's a dreadful position. Queen takes pawn is still the problem for black. If knight g4, well, you can just push the knight out of the way. Knight c4 played. There's a pin there, and it does defend the e-pawn. Uh, lots of ways for white to play, but d6... Nepo was on a roll here. He was moving very quickly. You know, if that's taken, then queen takes e5. It's not getting better, this position. Talk about pin and win. This is absolutely beautiful for white. Uh, so bishop d8. Of course, you don't exchange. You just play bishop c3, keeping black bottled up. And now, well, look at that. Miserable bishop on d8. Those are split rooks. It doesn't help black's position. And the bishop has reached this wonderful diagonal. Queen e6 to try and defend this guy. Knight d3. That knight hops out. Once again attacking this one. Knight d5. Okay, it looks at first glance a little bit dangerous. You know, these knights look a little bit menacing. But actually, white has lots of good moves here. You could just drop the bishop back to a1. Everything is fine. But Nepo just played a very practical move. <laughs> By the way, round about this point, um, looking at the clock times, they looked like they were even on the clock because both said, well, 1.11. But actually, Nepo had 1 hour 11 minutes left. But Firuz Jar had 1 minute 11 seconds. 1 minute 11 seconds for 12 moves to get to the time control. So Nepo was just storming this game, playing so quickly. So yeah, he just forced exchanges. He he didn't need to get too flashy here. So that hits this one. Of course, there's a pin here, so that, that knight, of course, can't be taken. Knight takes, rook takes. F6 to try and kind of block that diagonal. Queen e2 
hits that knight now. Um, I mean, this is completely lost. If knight takes, then, well, again, pin and win. That pawn is pinned. There's a nasty pin there, and that's winning for, for white. So that knight is hit. Knight b2 played. Rook f1. That knight was hitting the rook, but just switches over to the f file. And, yeah, again... This is now a threat to take here, exploiting the pin on the F file. So rook e8, and now Nepo switched to the king. And it's full steam ahead now. It's completely lost. F5. Well, there are loads of ways to win. Um, Nepo just took the easy route actually, just giving up this rook and this breaks through if queen h6, queen takes rook and well you can see all these moves are threatened and queen f7 as well, it's utterly lost. Um, and what is that knight doing on b2? Nobody knows. Queen h5 check, well Fidus Jar had had enough. King g8, knight takes f5, there is absolutely no defence to rook g1 check and here Fidu's jar resigned if king f8, let's just take it through to mate here, rook g7, here, and that is the end of that. So, well, an absolutely convincing win, win for Yan Nippon Nishi. Uh, so interesting that Fidu's jar was the one that sprung the surprise with bishop c4, but Nepo just handled it beautifully. I, I think this move is really important, a very practical move, playing king b1. Uh, you know, he wasn't distracted by knight g3, but king b1, really practical move, and he just had faith in his position. And, well, we have to question Firuz Jar's strategy of going for these really sharp lines. Um, and he's now... Well, on minus one, he's on one and a half out of four. Uh, let's just look at the standings. Uh, Nepo is out on the lead with out in the lead with three out of four. Caruana drew against Ding. He had well had to find some careful moves, uh, but did so well. Uh, so Caruana on two and a half, Nepo on three, and three players at the bottom: Ding, Rajabov, and Filuzja on one and a half. Still a very long way to go, but Nepo looking good out in the lead on his own with three out of four. Quick reminder about my live broadcast on Friday at 1800 hours Central European time. That's uh, 12 noon in New York, um, where I'll be interviewing Ruslan Ponomario, former FIDE world champion, about um, this new book, from Ukraine with Love for Chess, uh, which is, well, published by New in Chess. You'll find the link uh, in the video description. I'll put it in the comments as well. It'll be absolutely fascinating. So if you have questions for Ruslan Ponomaryov, do put them in the chat and do join us live on Friday. Thanks for watching.